Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for attending this talk. My name is Mariano Martin from the University of Salamanca in Spain, and this is a collaborative work uh, as part of an European project, IProBio, in collaboration with Professor Corazza from the Universidad Federal de Paraná. The talk we are going to uh, comment today is about the integration of circular economy in the food industry. We are all aware of the fact that our society is generating a lot of waste. However, thanks to the global environmental awareness, as well as street legislation, we are developing technologies, as well as making use of that waste, in order to, on the one hand, produce higher value products, as well as reduce a part of the waste, creating this circular economy. We are going to consider the, the application of this uh, principle into the food industry. On the one hand, the example of the food uh, industry related to the production of juice, orange juice, and on the second hand, the, uh, the production of natural extracts from spent coffee ground, that is the residue generated when we produce uh, soluble coffee. We we'll start with the uh, case study of the production of juice. On the one hand, we have the typical line that extrudes the squeeze, the, the oranges, generates the juice. The juice needs to be pasteurized and it consists of two states uh, of heating up till 90 degrees C. And we can pack that uh, to be sold in the, into the market. On the other hand, we have the residue. The residue is the peels of the oranges. We model each one of these units based on our experimental data as well as mass and energy balances. Once uh, we have the pills, we are going to proce process them to obtain a higher added value uh, extract, that is uh, limonene. We can consider two different alternatives, the use of exchange and the use of steam. The use of exchange consists of putting into contact the pills with uh, exchange in a ratio 12 to 1, so that the limonene is extracted. A separation of the waste, uh, results in the fact that we have to recover the exchange for, for our reuse while we get the, the orange waste uh, for, for the use. In case of using steam, we put it together, the pills and the steam, at 150 degrees C and 15 bar. We uh, uh, decrease the pressure, flush the, the results, and on the one hand we have a slurry with water and the, the residue and on the other hand we have the limonene and water just with condensation and because of the immiscibility we can recover the limonene. We model each one of the uh, processes and stages based on mass and energy balances and experimental data from the literature in, in particular for the yields of the recovery of limonene using each one of the two alternatives. The waste generated in each one of the stages is digested. One of the things is we use experimental data uh, related to the composition of that waste. And a particular feature of the fact that we've already removed the limonene is the fact that it improves the digestion yield because the limonene in the end uh, hinders the, the digestion. This reactor operates at 55 degrees C and we model it based on mass and energy balances in order to compute the composition and of course the, uh, the yield towards uh, biogas as well as the NPK index uh, of the digestate. The digestion process is based on four stages, hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis and methanogenesis. And uh, we will compute and use that biogas for uh, the production of power within the facility. The production of power out of the biogas uh, requires that we have to clean it up, remove the H2S uh, using a bed of uh, uh, ferrum oxide, as well as the removal of uh, traces of ammonia and up to a certain point CO2. Once the biogas is, uh, is clean from uh, this species, we can use a Brighton cycle, an open Brighton torn cycle, a gas turbine, in order to produce the power. We model it based on a compression step, each one of the stages 
as a polytropic compression, an adiabatic uh, comb combustion chamber, and an expansion. The hot flue gas can be either used to heat up the different uh, stages and units that require energy, or alternatively, we can use it uh, within a combined cycle, using it to produce steam, and with that steam power in a, a regenerative ranking cycle with, regen uh, with reheating. We have, therefore, four different alternatives. On the one hand, the use of exchange or steam uh, as a means to extract the limonene. And for each one of the alternatives, we have the possibility of using either just a gas turbine with the use of the hot flue gas to produce the hot utility, uh, thermal utility for uh, heating up the streams across the flow sheet or the production of uh, additional power using a combined cycle. We see that, of course, the, 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 the use of a combined cycle increases the investment because of the need to buy a, a steam turbine and the heat exchanger network that produce, uh, produces the steam. However, it is important to see that it is cheaper to, to use uh, steam, even though uh, the profit is a little higher in the case of using exchange. However, if we are going to use the limonene within the food industry, it is recommended to use steam basically because the traces of exchange in the limonene will hinder its use. In an important feature of the investment cost is the, con uh, is the contribution of the digester, basically because are uh, huge units to deal with a large amount of water and a little bit of organic uh, matter. The second uh, process uh, deals with the integration of the use of the spent coffee ground within the production of soluble coffee. We consider uh, up to uh, four different processes to obtain natural extract, natural pigment, power, and of course the utilities that we need uh, for our process. Together with the integration of energy, as in the previous case, we also consider integration of water to re reduce the, the water consumption. The first of the uh, processes, we consider the process A1 A1, that deals with the production of natural extract. This natural extract uh, is uh, produced by first the extraction of the uh, spent coffee ground using water and uh, acid. We have a decantation to recover the organic matter and the extract is nanofiltrated. The residue from the nanofiltration can be used after uh, it's drying uh, as a natural pigment and the product from the nanofiltration is uh, processed through a reverse osmosis and after drying we uh, recover the natural extract. The second process, A1, uses the residue from the extraction of the natural extract as a raw material for the digestion and the production of biogas. And process A2 deals with the production of a natural pigment once we dry the, the residue from the nanofiltration. Process 2 and process A1 actually are similar in the sense that they are both based on the digestion of a waste. The only difference is where, while in process A1 we are using the extract from the uh, recovery of the natural extract, in process 2 we are using directly the spent coffee ground. In both cases we target the production of uh, biogas as, um, as in, the, in the case before we have to clean that biogas before it's used. For that uh, we have to remove the sulfur hydride, as well as the residue of ammonia, and so on. Once uh, we have the, the purification of the biogas, it can be used to produce power, and from the uh, treatment of the digestate, we can sell it as a fertilizer. The, the final process is the production of power just by uh, uh, First, natural drying to avoid using energy uh, for this stage. 
We are going to optimize the superstructure to decide on which are the products that are more interesting for us to, to produce. We consider uh, a production capacity of 450 tons per year, and the model is, uh, is uh, consists of uh, 500 equations and 1,500 variables. The best process selected by the optimization consists of process 1, A1 and A2, basically where we are targeting uh, the production of natural extract, natural pigment and biogas out of the residues from the previous uh, stage. We see that 40% of the spent coffee ground is used to provide the utilities required uh, within the process, basically for the drying stages of the natural extract and the natural pigment. And regarding the products, in terms of mass, basically uh, the diester represents the larger uh, contribution. However, the smaller one, 2.5%, actually is the one that uh, brings the highest profit. Together with, the, with these products, it is possible to produce 7.5% of the steam required for the production of soluble coffee. Basically, the, the reason is that uh, we produce the, the utilities, we produce hot air for the drying of the trucks, and together with that, we produce steam. And that steam is the one that, uh, apart from uh, meeting the internal demands of the facility, can help in the sustainability of the entire process. In terms of uh, cost, the total investment adds up to 14 million euros. And as uh, you can see, the income is quite large compared to the operating cost. Basically, we are uh, treating waste, so the raw material uh, is uh, reduced, while we also reduce the cost of uh, utilities because we are using our own raw material to produce them. So with this, we see that uh, even though there are uh, processes like uh, process one and process three that are profitable, uh, we target the, the first one basically because of the high profitability. With this, uh, I'd like to jump to the conclusions. Actually, we've implemented uh, the circular economy in two cases for, for the uh, food industry. We see the possibilities of, on the one hand, producing high added value products, as well as uh, the possibility and capability of producing the energy uh, required for those uh, facilities to operate. On the one hand, the uh, oranges uh, actually we require for the digest state to be a part of the uh, of the profit, otherwise it's not uh, easy to, to obtain uh, good values there. And in the case of the spent coffee ground, we see that 40% uh, of the spent coffee ground is required for the self-sustain of the facility, and we can help in the in the production of the soluble coffee by generating 7.5% of the steam. With this, I'd like to uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to take any questions by any of the means the conference will provide. Thank you very much for your attention.